great pleasure to introduce to you <laughs> the elusive and now healthy Mr. Alumni, I decided to research sports in the Dominican Republic. My first approach to this topic was to blame all the blame to the Dominican government. But in further research, I learned that there were three specific groups in this situation. So hi, I'm Anton Carlos, and my topic is the two about sports in the Dominican Republic. I learned that the three groups that most influence the problems in sports are the Dominican government, the Dominican ministers, and the Dominican athletes. And I decided to research their pros and cons and evaluate them in a video. Since I was sick, so I didn't know if it was, I was going to have a chance to present. So I decided to make a video. <coughs> Athletes of the Dominican Republic regularly complain about lack of support from the government. Yet, according to a bit of the support, the Dominican government gives around one to four million pounds monthly to its federation in the country. The government is given around 20 million pesos per year to the federation. The biggest problem the government faces is that after giving the money to the federation, they think they got the sun, but actually it's not. They are not supervised to see whether the generations are spending the money they are sending to us. And often, they are not. Well, from the main example is a recent case of Osiris Mahina, president of the Dominican Republic Soccer Federation in the country, who was suspended by FIFA and is being investigated for the receipt of the $51 million given by the Dominican government. Clearly, some individual ministers cannot be trusted with the money being handed to them to enhance support in our country. As a result, athletes are complaining about the lack of support and false promises made by the Dominican government. But who is going to the problems and finance with the athletes in the Dominican Republic? Is it the government, the ministers, or the athletes themselves? Because of all the points involved, it, it is impossible to blame a single athlete. Yet, as a result of the insufficient funds provided by the government, potential athletes are suffering and they are struggling to be internationally competitive. To solve this problem, according to the President of the Ministry of Sports, I know that we, the Dominican government needs to create a single ministry to manage the form of sports, education, and culture. In addition, the public sector to create an organization to scout and to help support local athletes capable of success in international competition. When talking about struggles in sport, it is not common to blame athletes for the situation. Even though the Dominican athletes are very gifted, they do not always receive the same resources that athletes from the US or other countries receive. Despite this fact, the Dominican Republic has increased their participation in the Olympics throughout the years. According to the official Freedom Policy, the Dominican athletes actually improved them as part of the middle school. In the summer of 1984, the general Alaska won the first medal in the Dominican history. Twenty years later, Betty Sanchez won the first gold medal for the Dominican Republic. In 2008, the Dominican Republic won silver and gold medals, and in 2012, the Dominican Republic defeated with gold and silver. Even this, we may not suspect that athletes are to blame for the Dominican Republic's lack of success at the Olympic Games. Yet, the fact is that many successful athletes like Freddy Sanchez or Sami Sosa, who have made a lot of money in their careers, do not rely on using facilities provided by the country because they do not get it here. They get it through practice for luxurious facilities paying high membership. Is more that athletes can afford. Why should the Dominican athletes care about the Dominican sports? Well, with the help of very successful athletes from the Dominican Republic, we will keep improving in sports. 
the funds that have been filled could be used to build new sports facilities and we need more of this. I think Apple should give back, like many others do, such as major players, Pedro Martin, and Sakina. These have to the baseball academy and baseball field for the future of the sports in the Dominican Republic. The contribution inspired the center athletes to see hope in each other. That is support for the athletes is your sad thing. In a situation that is not similar to the one proving despite the success of the Dominican athletes in baseball, volleyball, tennis, swimming, and other disciplines. For athletes in the Dominican Republic to find support has been a current example is the case of the Dominican tennis player which is illustrated. He is 38 years old and is considered the best tennis player in history in just one year of play. What did his player career price away? The Dominican government has been supporting his career. He has gone from a year bankruptcy and given his car to be able to pay the expenses of the tennis tournament. Because the Dominican government ignored the home of future stars. Now that he is making a for himself, he is near retirement. According to Michael Powell, Estrella as a kid struck the ball like a bird, but in the Dominican Republic, people do not spend money on kids. Estrella made his debut at the age of 2 at the age of 32 to 33. Powell was out. Today, we have the last one to play tennis exclusively until 2007. It is a statue that one of the songs of the Dominican Republic is a major fair country to Latin stars in the Dominican Republic. this was the case in this day. I'm happy to wait for a long time to make it to the agency because no one wanted to overcome it. I think being the first American to also the list of top one black players in the world, he started getting financial support from the country, but it was too late. As today, I was already one of the oldest players in the league, and did not have many opportunities to capitalize on his own talents. I am the that the Division of Sports has probably been used as the Dominican government to lack of resources to provide to the Minister of Sports. In an interview public in the he said, sports need more resources, and we need to talk about how we can get more funds from other ministries, institutions, and the private sector. This suggests that the regular public will benefit a lot from the help of the private sector. The private sector will be able to provide more ideas on how to get out of economic problems for a certain rate of wage. David is looking for funds from different corporations. And this funds will be granted if the following corruption are resolved. But the ministry should not blame on all of this economic problems on the Dominican government. Because, according to Latin Union from the newspaper one, the Ministry of Sports asked 34 deputy ministers to receive a monthly salary. And according to the Ministry of and the Transform Movie, for the law, you should have. Six deputy ministers. This means we have 19 exercises that we need to eliminate. Resources are economically hoping to progress in the region. According to the Minister Antonia Borges, it would be for the advent of the recruiters and the skills.
There is no support for the sports in the major problem. It is just for upper middle class and the rich. In the domain of the people from the south middle class and high end, social economic class can buy the best equipment overseas, something that lower middle class and poor athletes can't afford. Also, athletes can really from social economic hardships have little guarantee of financial security in the, in the future. In an interview with the Hannah Grace, the Manager Gwen told her that Hannah Gamma showed her disappointment when she stayed. While the Hannah was turned from the Americano, and the Hannah was the Yankee, the Hannah was the Yankee, the Hannah was the Yankee, the Hannah was the and quite the history of the Sunday that contributed. One system in the Dominican Republic used as a mirror to improve the situation. Spain had a series of ministries in the country, but in the Ministry of Sports, Education, and Culture is a single ministry. The Ministry of Sports, Education, and Culture receives only one budget and they fund according to what each branch needs at the time. With the help of different secretaries of state created by the country's government. The effects of the moderate system are shown in the Olympics. As Spain is one of the most successful countries in the history of sports in international competitions, with 100 and 30 medals, and worldwide superstars like Amanda, Patterson, and Fernando Alonso who were all supported in the new age. Spain is definitely a role model that the Greek Republic should look at to overcome our current time. Today, in the Dominican Republic, the Ministry of Sports, Education, and Culture are separated. Take a look at this interview from Ayala where he shares one of the ideas. Corporations 
are found in place not the government, which suggests that private sector and the government should team up. Before giving my final statement, I want to explain the interview of Jaime David. What he's saying is that today in the Dominican Republic, the ministries are very distant and they lack communication uh, before funding each other. So he's, he is asking to the help of the, of the economists and the government to see how they can make one single ministry and how they can fund accordingly to what each band needs at the time. For example, if, we, if, if the sports needs more money than the, for example, uh, who do, then they will fall accordingly and give more money to the sports at that time. So finally, I think sports funding in the Dominican Republic shouldn't be a blaming game. I think we need to work together to overcome the problem, the problems of funding athletes. It is time to stop complaining to the Dominican government for the lack of funding to the athletes. Instead, the private sector and citizens that can promote or fund young athletes should do so. So, working together, the government and the private sector, we can shape a better future for the Dominican athletes. Um, so, in this process has been a pretty long process for you, and I would like you to talk a little bit about the process on the paper, what you learned over the course of writing the paper. Um, well, my first, the first semester, I only looked at the flaws of the Dominican government, and I was like repeating the same things in every paragraph, like, the Dominican government does this wrong, does this wrong. But when I met with Mr. Britsy and doing extensive research, uh, I I got to know that not everything is bad in the sports science and the Republic. And we, we cannot blame only the the Dominican government because also the ministers, uh, as he said, have 19 workers in excess that receive a high payment. And also the athletes don't always give back when they have a successful career. So I mean, we can't blame it. all the flaws to the government. I think we need to fix this and work together to overcome this. So you broadened your perspective and you yourself stopped placing blame and started looking for solutions. Exactly. Hello. Yeah. Uh, how does building house? impact not the people like they're building houses. Like how does it impact the athletes like by Well uh, some of these athletes don't have a home to go at night. So imagine you playing and not giving you one hundred percent because you think well where I'm gonna sleep tonight. Um so with the help of Pedro Martinez he's building a lot of homes to those athletes that um they have a place to go at night, and where they, when they are practicing, they're locked in on the, on the sport. They don't, they don't have to think where they're sleeping. Thank you. Hi, I'm new to this country, so I'm going to ask a question of ignorance. Um, in many countries, the ministries of sport also reach down at, at the younger ages, providing all sorts of uh, Youth development leagues for young kids who seem to have athletic promise, or anything like that here in the VR. Well, I know that some school gives scholarships for. I know I have a friend that uh, St. Thomas would give him 100% with no payments because he's not a really good soccer player because um, they play the Copa Copa. So some schools do that, that they scout and give. Scholarships to the uh, athletes. So, so is that the, the school is providing an incentive? Uh, it's not being funneled. It's not government money being funneled through the school. No. But uh, I know that 
I don't know if the government gives scholarships to athletes in the in the colleges in this country, mm -hmm. but I know they have different academies that they like they provide to the poor that cannot pay and they scout. And also, Crest scouts the, the athletes and they provide them with practices like in Brazil. Now that they are playing the Olympics, they go to Brazil with and they don't have to pay any. Okay. Right, it's like your, all of the expenses. So I think I understand this better. The, the ministry might put on, uh, might assist in some ways for uh, youth development, but it's pretty much left up to, to local school systems. Yeah. And so I would guess there's a huge discrepancy between schools of wealth and schools of much lower needs. Um, do you have any sense of what the solution there would be? Um, I guess, like, I know, for example, in the U.S., the government and the, and the colleges are, well, like, connected because uh, in the college in the U.S., they pay things like NCAA, where they give scholarships to the athletes. But here, there's, there's nothing like that in the tournaments, like in colleges. There are no college-level tournaments for athletes. So I don't know how the government it seems to be an important part of the solution in some way to find um, athletes of promise at a young age to help support them along the way. I think it just seems like that would be an important part of this. But I think like the government could work with colleges from the U.S. And for example, if I'm a very good, for example, basketball player, I send a video to the government and the government with their connection helps me get to to a college in the U.S. because if if like I can get a college in the U.S. because I'm in this school, but people that are in public schools that are very talented, they can't contact those colleges. So if they could provide that, it would help. Yeah. Thank you. Um, that was clever. You did a movie, and since you have a small audience, then you ended up being part of the audience as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I was wondering, so it, it, it seems like that, that uh, a, a solution that you're proposing is to have the private sector work with the government, work with the government right? So <clears throat> there, was a, there was a clip in, the, in your presentation, um, and it kind of goes to the same, the, the, the same housing aspect of it, where there was an athlete that they were talking about that an apartment was promised to him, but not a, and give it to him, right? So I was just thinking that there is a there is a problem in the country that has to do with poverty. So athletes are not the only ones who don't have housing, right? There are a lot of people here in the Dominican Republic who might not have a roof over their heads. Yes. So I was just wondering if you, if, what sense you have in terms of the the more direct participation in developing athletes, maybe through schools and things like that, and you know all of that aspect of it, and and the interaction with the poverty aspect of it. You know, like whose responsibility do you think that when, when you think about the private sector and the government, like what aspects of, of the problem do you think should belong in each side? I hope that was clear. Like what responsibilities do each well because so if so if you're thinking that you would have the private sector collaborating with the uh, with the public sector, the ministries, and so on and so forth, right? <clears throat> the problem is really complex because we, you were, you know, from everything that you were saying, it's like there is one aspect that has to do with the development of athletes, meaning opportunities. We talked about, you know, like schools, scholarships that are about developing the athletes specifically. And then there's a social problem, which has to do with maybe they don't have housing, but that's bigger because it's Athletes are not the only ones who maybe not have a roof over their head. You know, it's a bigger DR problem. So I was wondering, like, how would you divide? What kinds of what kinds of things do you think the private sector should address? What kinds of uh, parts? What parts of the problem? And what parts of the problem do you feel the government should take over? Um, I think the government should should scout, like, have different. Um, programs in each sector of the city. For example, in baseball, 
you can go to San Cristobal and you see many vacant fields, many programs that the government is scouting. But uh, as you can see, the government doesn't give a lot of money to the athletes. So that's when the private sector comes in, and if they need more money, the private sector can, can help them with more facilities, more practices, the economic problems. Okay. So you're thinking that the, the government would still take care of like the logistics, scouting, uh, making yes. sure that they have good, uh, uh, you know, like housing or health services, and and the private sector would be more like a, a um, funding yeah, uh, agent. Okay. Mr. Britton, do you have a question? Uh, one, uh, one question which I would like to ask. Uh, Based on the, the, the practice that I'm involved in, the, the sports in India, do um, you think that the federations play an important part in the success of the <coughs> sporting athletes or the sports in general? And in your research, do you have anything you know, with anything to do? So speak about the volleyball association, what is happening with them and so on. Um, I didn't quite get to the bottom in depth, but I know that they're ranked like number two or number one in the world, the women volleyball. So I think the federations, that federation specifically is key. I mean, they obviously have a great coach and obviously they have great players, but I think and the government should should fund the federations that are strong right now. Like for example, swimming, we're not doing very good. So, yeah. I'm wondering, um, uh, you know, your presentation. You were talking a little bit about, you know, like okay, now that you know the, the some of the Olympic uh, opportunities that have happened and where where um, some of our some of the athletes here have been able to win. Right now you were talking about uh, the success of, let's say, maybe being second in volleyball for females and, you know, things like that. Like, but I'm wondering philosophically, um, uh, you know, because not, not everybody is necessarily going to win or, um, you know, or, or, or get to that particular level, but philosophically, where do you stand in terms of um, the role that a broader sports program, you know, athletic program in the country would have beyond finding the best players that are going to go out and win. Um, uh, you know, just wondering where you stand philosophically. Like, how do you think that would help the country as a whole to develop more more access to to athletic opportunities and to the development of uh, sports? Yeah. Uh... So the, I think the biggest problem in this country is that when you have the gifts of being very good at sports, like you don't know where to go or where to when, when someone can help you. So, because I know in the U.S., if you're very good, you only go to many different programs where you, the university scouts you and gives you a scholarship right after high school. But here, it's very, very difficult to get those type of things. So, um, I think, uh, yeah. I guess I'm trying to find out if you think that there's a beyond getting stars, uh, if you feel like there is a, a, a another benefit for to the country as a whole um, to you know to spend money and resources in developing sports, you know, uh, at the country. Uh, yeah, because I mean, here we don't we don't have uh, big stadiums or big facilities. I mean, if we we get better in sports, more money is gonna come to the country. And I don't know, we hope we have an Olympic here or something like that. That would be cool. That's great. Any other questions? One, thank you.